my name is Katie welcome back to my channel I'm gonna make a little critique on save the cat and how it has changed my writing style and all of that um, I really do enjoy all the beats in this uh, when I just did the three act structure it wasn't really helpful for me and knowing like what should happen when I just knew rising action falling action all that jazz and the pinch points and all that stuff and what I love about save the cat and then also romancing the beat is that they go hand to hand so that's been really helpful for me as a romance writer a contemporary romance writer my favorite thing about this book is this that I always forget to reference <laughs> and it tells you like how many scenes should be in each beat and when I've been outlining I haven't been using my own word document outlines that are up on my members page I instead I'm just like this is what comes next and I have like multiple chapters for all is lost when technically according to this it's one scene so like uh, I do have some faults with Save the Cat, which if you followed my April Camp Nano of 2020, <laughs> um, I talk about some of those faults and a lot of them are in the finale. Um, when you break it up into gathering the team, executing the plan, high tower surprise, dig deep down, and execution of the plan, they put out like three scenes for each of those and I don't even have those half the time. Like. So my act three is always really small when I think of it in this way. And um, there are other things that I love and don't love about this method, but it's been the most helpful for me. And another thing that's been very confusing that I thought I had nailed down is what the B story actually is because I kept making it be the love interest when maybe it's a mentor or someone random, but like, so what I really need to do, what I like that they do in here is after they give you like a summary of what should be in each beat, they go through the different types of themes you could have, like the superhero theme, and then it gives an example of a book and takes you through its beats so you can see how that goes. I also like that they state that while these beats are good, they don't have to go in a particular order and they don't have to have that many scenes um, especially when it came to the finale it says like you may not need all of those I think Bridget Jones's diary is a really good one where it kind of um, skips like there's a scene that's just really short so after it takes you through all of those lessons and examples at the end is a pitch it to me chapter that gives you a log line template like how to create your little pitch and then also like a short synopsis template Another thing I found interesting is that they kind of do like a wrap up at the end. So they say a general rule of thumb is to have approximately 30 cards for every 25,000 words. 30 cards. That's like more than I have for my 60,000 word novel. <laughs> Um, yeah, so it's saying for a 75,000 word novel, you might end up with somewhere around 90 cards, which is just insane to me. But as is what I'll talk about in Story Genius, all those scene cards they want you to have too. But at the end, this also does give you a breakdown of if you're writing a series, how to go about that, if you get stuck, and just general tips like that. So for this whopping thing, you can see all these. I'm pretty sure I talked about each one in my Save the Cat experiment videos and then give an example of what I'm doing with them in my story. So um, that might be helpful for you, for me to read what it's supposed to be and then what I decided to do with it or where I had trouble or whatever. I know a lot of people don't exactly love this method, but it was something new to me that was really helpful in me upping my writing game. So for those of y'all new to the Save the Cat Writes a Novel game, this one, so Save the Cat was made by Blake Snyder and Save the Cat Writes a Novel was by Jessica Brody. And so they say like you're open and there's also templates that I'm going to try to find and put on my members pages as well. Um, I will have my outlines up, but if you want to do like where you input how your word count and like where everything should fall. Um, I will say in the story genius book I just finished, it talks about like not being so hyper-focused on those page numbers and word counts and percentages and all of that which I find it helpful but um, yeah if you if that template is something that helps you I'm gonna try to find it and put it up on my page so for Save the Cat Beats I'm just gonna do a rundown of the beats and explain what is in them very concisely if y'all have more questions just let me know down below so 
Um, they have the opening image, which is one scene, and it's a before snapshot of your main character and slash hero in their world. So it's going to be what their opening scene is. What I really love about this, and I think Story Genius might have it too, but like your opening image and your final image is, are like mirror of each other and like what's changed and how your character has like their mindset has changed and how they view the world has changed. And I think that's just like a really cute opening image, final image. For Romancing the Beat, they do it a little bit differently where they like bring back some inside joke or some first time they met, first time they kiss, and they kind of mirror it that way, which I also really like. And I tried to do in my uh, project in my book, and I think it went pretty well. So next you have the theme stated, and this could be anywhere really in the first act. And this is a statement made by a character normally not the hero, that hints at what the hero's arc will be. This is what the hero must learn or discover before the end of the book. I thought this could be like their best friend or whoever, whoever, and I think it's supposed to come from someone like not really close to them <laughs> or not the B story either. And so like that one gives me trouble sometimes when I just want to like pack it all into like the first chapter. So they say their setup is 1% to 15%. This is an exploration of the hero's status quo life and all its flaws. This is where we learn what the hero's life and world look like before its epic transformation. Um, in this setup, 15% is a lot to a lot of people and a lot of people put their catalyst before that and you can still kind of be setting up if you do your catalyst and debate and like keep setting up, I guess, but from what I've seen from a lot of people, no one really makes it to the 25% mark for act one. It just, unless your catalyst comes really late and it depends on your story, I guess. So. A lot of this is like so subjective it's insane <laughs> so you're gonna have your catalyst and it's an inciting incident that happens to the hero which will catapult them into a new world or new way of thinking but when they have that catalyst they're first gonna be like heck no and they're gonna debate it so your next scenes are the debate scenes a reaction sequence in which the hero debates what they will do next usually presented in the form of a question then we break into two, and this is from 25% to 75%, your lovely murky middle. I actually love the middle, and my fun and games gets way out of hand. <laughs> but somewhere in this one is where your B story is supposed to happen, but it's totally cool if it comes up in act one. So break into two is the moment the hero decides to accept the call to action, leave their comfort zone, try something new, venture into a new world and a new way of thinking. So this is them accepting that catalyst. Their B story is the introduction of a new character or characters who will ultimately serve to help the hero learn the theme. So maybe they could also deliver the theme stated. <laughs> Fun and games is from 25% to 50%. This is where we see the hero in their new world. This is also called the promise of the premise, which is like when you do your blurb or you do your pitch, like this is what readers are coming for. This represents the hook of the book and why your reader picked it up in the first place. I love fun and games. It's my favorite. If you ever need help with it, let me know and I will brainstorm and come up with some awesome stuff. <laughs> So after Fun and Games is the midpoint. This is one scene at the 50% mark, literally the middle of the novel where the Fun and Games culminates in either a false of victory or a false defeat. Something should happen here to raise the stakes and push the hero toward real change. I want y'all to let me know down below if y'all have ever created a false defeat book because I always come up with false victories. My Fun and Games is always Fun and Games. <laughs> and so it's never like bad and they don't like have a false defeat although I had an idea of one that did that but I cannot think of it now in romance this is where like they have their first kiss or they decide to be boyfriend girlfriend or something that's like the tippity top of their relationship that's about to just like plow down a hill in comes bad guys close in this is 50% to 75% but like not like it includes the all is lost and dark night of the soul so like 75% so bad guys close in if the midpoint was a false victory, this section will be a downward trajectory where things get consistently worse for the hero. If the midpoint was a false defeat, this section will be an upward traje trajectory, oh my gosh, that word is hard, where things get seemingly better. Regardless of trajectory, oh, 
the hero's inner demons or internal bad guys are always closing in. So this is your like external plot, like actual bad guys closing in, but it's also could be your inner bad guys. How they feel about themselves, their self-worth, their inability to keep friends or family leaving or whatever. Um, all of that is their inner demons too. And this is where you're going to just like hit them with everything, family, friends, external stuff like whatever and then internally analyze that and just like pummel them so the all is lost is the lowest point of the novel this is an action beat where something happens to the hero that combined with those internal bad guys pushes them to rock bottom and i don't ever know how this is like one scene because like i need multiple scenes for everything to come crumbling down unless I crumble them down through bad guys close in and then all is lost is that final one the final straw I don't know like I said this gets tricky for me but this is what the thing says so Dark Knight of the Soul is a reaction beat similar to the debate beat where the hero takes a moment to react to everything that's happened leading up to this moment the darkest night before the dawn this is the moment right before the hero figures out the solution to their big problems and learns the theme Typically, you're going to want them to figure this out on their own. If anyone steps in to help them, they are not being proactive. They're not the active one. They're kind of passively getting a clue. So you really want to strive for your hero, your pro tag, to be the one that clicks. So then they're going to break into three. This is one scene, that aha moment. The hero realizes what they must do, not only to fix all of the problems created in Act 2, but more importantly, fix themselves. In my stories, a lot of times they're dark night when they debate it is when they come up with this answer. To me, these are like so blurred. I blur my beats so bad. Holy cow. But anyways, <laughs> maybe this isn't the structure for me. <laughs> so then we go to the finale and this is where the hero proves they have truly learned the theme and enacts the plan they come up with and the break into three. Bad guys are destroyed and inner, inner demons are conquered. Lovers are reunited. The hero's world is not only saved, it's a better place than it was before. This finale has five parts. It goes into gather the team, actually I'll do this, gather the team, execute the team, high tower surprise, actually this gets tricky, dig deep down, and execution of the new plan. High tower surprise is really when like, a plot twist kind of occurs that throws a wrench in their whole plan and then they gotta like scramble and figure out some new stuff. I don't really know how that works in contemporary and I said that in my <laughs> camp videos. If y'all have a clue down below, please help a girl out. And then we have the final image. This is the one scene at 99% mark, a mirror to the opening image. This is a closing snapshot of who the hero is now that he's gone through the epic and satisfying transformation. And so all of these notes, this is like my outline that I have posted in my members page. And then I'm going to have that log line template pitch deal at the bottom of that page as well if you need it. Let me know what y'all think of this outline method down below if you are yay or nay. And stay tuned this month as I come out with other types of writing craft notes and tips and critiques. As always, happy writing and I will see y'all next time.